Many of you would have preached from, many of you uh, would have heard numerous sermons from, and um, we're just going to ask the Holy Spirit to, to just um, minister to us from something that is familiar, and my prayer is let something that is familiar not routinize us, but bring us a fresh revelation, amen? Matthew chapter 4 verse 18 to 20, Matthew chapter 4 verse 18 to to 20, as Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, not Simon Javis, called Peter, <laughs> and his brother Andrew. Not John Andrew, but Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen. And this is the most familiar passage. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. Father, bless the reading of this word. Amen, amen. I want to talk about empowering the call. And empowering the call involves four very important things. You see, I, I believe in, in... I believe because out of my own personal life and personal testimony, I realize that God doesn't call those who are qualified. He qualifies those whom He calls. God doesn't empower those who are learned but He calls us and then He empowers us to be learned. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so when we talk about empowering the call, we have to come back to basic. And the most fundamental basic is that the empowerment of the call comes from a relationship with our Father in heaven. The, the empowering of the call of God in our life for missions comes from that relationship with God the Father. And that's why Jesus said to the disciples, Come. Come is an invitation. Come is an invitation to the source of power. You see, friends, when you know Him, you have permission. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you know Him, you receive permission. I mean, when my children know my directive for their life, they have permission to become the very man and the very woman that God has called them. In the same way, when you know the heart of God, when you know your Father through that relationship, it empowers you to become the man and the woman of destiny. When you know Him, not only will you have permission, but when you know Him, you will have authority. You see, when you and I come into the source of relationship because of the invitation, that's why Jesus says, come, follow me. Come is an invitation. And when you come and you get to know Him, immediately in knowing Him, authority is imparted into our life. You see, my authority today, it's not because I, I am Reverend Dominic Yeo or I'm a pastor in, in Trinity Christian Center. My authority comes because I know who who my God is. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And because out of, out of that knowledge, out of that intimate existential relationship with Him, God puts authority into my life to begin to proclaim the Word of God. And so when you know Him, you have permission. When you know Him, you have authority. When you know Him, you have insights. And that's why men of Issachar who knows the times and what Israel should do because they know their God, they receive an insight. And a lot of times, a lot of times as we are venturing into the call of God, we need to have the insight into what the call is all about. And that's why our sister mentioned today, you know, when, when, when you know the call of God, it can terrify you because sometimes God calls us to a place that we are not ready for. But God has ordained for us to be in that place. And God will take us to that place. It can terrify us, but you know what, friends? You will have the insights of God. When you know Him, you will have purpose. You know, when, 
whether it's a missionary call or whether it is a call to be a sender or whether it's a call to empower those to go or whether it's a call to do translation or whether it's a call to become a chaplain in local missions. Friends, it is very important that we have that purpose of God because you can step into a position without purpose. And when you step into a position without purpose, very soon you will become like Harry the hamster spinning on the wheel of life. Lots of motion, no direction. And you're wondering, what am I here for? But when you, when, when you understand that position, but because you know Him, you have the purpose. Purpose plus position gives us power. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Purpose with position gives us power. When, you see, that's why Daniel 11.32 says, those who knows their God will carry out great exploit. And so, to, so in this whole understanding of empowering our call into missions, it is very important that it comes from that relationship with God. It's not just, it's not just a relationship with a national leadership team that assigns you. No, it has to be that relationship with God first, fundamental. Because man affirms out of that relationship with God what God is doing in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Number two, very quickly because of time. Man, that just went 4.23. I saw the clock a moment ago. Can we just slow down the clock? <laughs> Empowering the call first comes from a relationship. Empower, empowerment of the call is released through identification and imitation. The empowerment of the call is released through identification and imitation. Jesus says, Follow me. So come is, a, is coming into a relationship. But to follow has to do with identification and an imitation. Let me break this down. Because following first, um, first is all about an identification. We identify with the mission expression of God. We identify through, uh, with His ways. We identify with His nature. And so for every missionary uh, that we send, it is very important that we teach our missionary to first identify with the cause, to identify with the agenda, to identify with his nature. Because when our missionaries do not identify, you know, they can do weird stuff. Yeah. A missionary can go with a colonial mindset. And it's not just a British thing because of colonization, you know, of, of the United Kingdom in our world. But it's not just, we're not just talking about you guys, but we're also talking about Singaporeans. Because sometimes when Singaporeans go to a third world nation, we go with a superior understanding because our dollar is greater than, than their dollar. Our lifestyle is different. Our, we speak English, they don't. So we go with that colonial mindset. And then very soon, we're not leading people to Christ. We end up leading, building an empire. I, I like the core values of this church. You know, as I went up to the washroom earlier on, I read that and, and man, it's so true, isn't it? The very purpose of God, the very agenda of God, the very core essence of the nature of Jesus Christ is not to colonize us, but it is to transform us. It is to restore humanity into a relationship with God. And therefore, it is very important that the empowerment of God's call is released through an identification, that we identify with the kingdom cause. We identify with what He is doing. We identify with the ways of Jesus Christ. And that's why Philippians 2 tells us in the Kenosis passage how he left glory to be with humanity. That's the ways of God. And, that's, and out of the identification, we then imitate. See, follow, firstly, is, a, is identification. I follow so that I can identify. But I also follow so that I can imitate. That's why Paul said to the, said to the people, follow me as I follow Christ. Or in another translation, Im imitate me as I imitate Christ. To follow is to imitate. We need to imitate and identify 
with the mission of Christ. And what is that? If you read through uh, the gospel and you come to the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it tells us that Jesus went throughout preaching the kingdom of God. The miracles, the deliverance, the healing were all the expression of the kingdom of God. Because when the kingdom of God is at hand, the miracles happen. When the kingdom of God is at hand, salvation takes place. When the kingdom of God is at hand, then healing and deliverance and all this takes place. But friends, it is really about preaching the kingdom of God. We need to be preaching the kingdom of God. We need to be extending the kingdom of God. And that's the sole purpose of Jesus Christ. So let's imitate His mission today to preach the kingdom, to expand the kingdom. And Jesus says, I will build my church. And that's why the other day at the advisory council meeting of the Pentecostal World Conference, my good friend, Dak Hewitt Mill, said to me, you know what? Two things we need to do. And I said to Dak, Dak, what's the two things we need to do? He says, preach the kingdom and plant churches. That's all we need to do. Preach the kingdom and plant churches. And, I, and, and, and so we went into a little bit of a theological discourse between me and Dak. You see, I was obviously... I was obviously challenged by Dak years ago when he came to Trinity Christian Centre. And he said to me, a big church like you should plant a thousand churches. And, and Simon, listen here very carefully. When he said that, something dropped into my heart. I stood up and I said, yes. And after I said yes, everybody looked at me. And, and you could see in their mind, it's nothing to do with being prophetic. You could see in their mind, how are we achieving it? <laughs> But you know what? We are on our way. We are on our way. Because you know why? The vision has got to be bigger than me. Because if it's not bigger than me, then I don't need God. Yeah. So I, so I was discussing with Dak. I said, Dak, why is it that we always talk about preach the kingdom and plant church? And he said this, whenever there's the activity of the gospel... A church needs to come forth to sustain the activity and then to multiply the activity of the Holy Spirit. He, because that is the evangelist, he said to me, if a church is not planted, and when a church is not planted, we don't see the kingdom of God flourished. It quickly comes and it disappears. I thought about, and it was true, when Billy Graham first came to Singapore in the, in the 70s, there were many people that came to know Jesus Christ. But because churches were not planted as quickly as the numbers came in, we never did sustain. And today, when I go back and do a historical research, we discover less than 1% of those that were saved at the Billy Graham crusade are in churches today. You do the same statistic check on Carlos Anacondia Ministry, Rana Bonke. We are not dismissing evangelists. We need them. But we also need to have a church planted to sustain the work of the gospel. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And that's why I'm very convicted about what we, the Assemblies of God, are after. Because the, the Assemblies of God World Council have come together and we say we're going to plant one million churches all over the world. Currently, we are 375,000 churches. We are on our way there. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a miracle, but we're going to believe it can happen. Amen. We're going to imitate His mission. Preach the kingdom of God and build His church. We have to imitate His ways. What is the ways of Jesus Christ? It's a model of incarnation, isn't it? He came to be with us so that He can bring us with Him. And that's what missions is all about. When we send a missionary to a city, when we send a missionary to a country, his idea is that the missionary will come into that place, live among the people, express the kingdom of God so that we can bring them to His kingdom. Amen? It is, it is the same model. And so Jesus today not only invites us to, to a relationship. But today, He's wanting to release us through an identification and an invitation of His agenda 
and of His ways. The empowerment of the call is still in the making. The empowerment of the call first comes from a relationship. Number two, it's released through identification and imitation. But number three, it is sealed in the making. God is interested in the making of men and women. That's why we are human beings and not human doing. Because what we do comes from who we are. Come follow me and I will make you. God is in the making. And that's why God calls those whom He qualify. He calls those whom He makes. He calls those whom He empowers. God makes us in two very clear ways. And for those of us that are preparing for missions, as we are, as we are developing the call to missions, understand two things needs to happen in all of our lives. Number one, a fashioning process. A fashioning process. You know, I planted churches in Malaysia. My first church that I planted was when I came into the ministry. I joined the ministry on July 1st, 1985. So I've been, I've been preaching the gospel since 1985. In 1985, we went to Central Java and we started a church in Perakoto, Central Java. Uh, and in that process, God began to fashion my life. God begins to to, to kind of smoothen out the rough edges. And before I knew it, I was then sent uh, to, to India. And I planted a church in India, in, in Madras. And then from Madras, planted a church in Perth. From Perth, uh, planted a couple more churches in India. And then from there, I uh, went to Vancouver, uh, Canada. And as I observed all that was happening, and each point of church planting, God was fashioning me, God was making me, God was taking away, God was revealing to me some of the areas in my life because God brings sandpaper Christians along the way to send me down. But, but you know what, we hate that process but it is actually in the making of God's man and God's woman. So that at the end of the day, we stand before humanity. Yes, we broken jars and, and clay, but the reality here is that we begin to display the glory of God through our lives. God wants to fashion you and I. And some of you today, this afternoon, may be in that place where He's fashioning you, where you feel uncomfortable, where you feel like you have a lot of sandpaper Christians around you. Please understand, don't pray them away. Pray for God's grace to enable you. Because the fashioning process of the potter and, and the clay is that if he don't like it, he's going to pluck it away. <laughs> Remember the scripture in John, for every branch that bears fruit, what does he do? He prunes. Man, it's a painful process. Pruning is part of the fashioning process of God. He prunes so that you and I can be more fruitful, isn't it? Because God wants to see fruitfulness in our lives. But the second way is what we all like, and that's called the endowment process. The empowerment is sealed in the making and in the making there are two processes at hand. One is the fashioning where it's painful, where God cuts, God nips, God shapes. But the other is what we call an endowment. It's an endowment from heaven. It is an outpouring from heaven. It is an invasion of heaven. And this invasion brings two things that will happen in our life. One, language skill and the other, abilities. Language, skill, and abilities. And so I want to I speak to you guys just for a few moments on this because some of you may be going to certain places and you may not speak the language, but I want you to know if you're open to the Holy Spirit, God can touch you and you will speak the language. My wife knows that I don't speak Mandarin. I may look Chinese, but I'm really, I'm really an egg. I may be brown on the outside, but I'm white on the inside. You will never find an Asian as up in your face like me. <laughs> right, Simon? <laughs> I love this brother. <laughs> 
So I don't go to a Chinese-speaking nation for years. For years in my ministry, for years in Trinity's ministry, whenever it comes to a Chinese-speaking nation, I send different people there. I say, you go. Because I don't speak Chinese. I don't speak Mandarin. My mother tongue is Malay. Half my family are Muslims. Half. They wear the whole garment, you know, the whole nayats. So I don't speak Chinese at all. And, um, and because of that, and I look Chinese, I'm really embarrassed to go to a Chinese-speaking nation. Coming to a Western nation, I love it because English is my first language. Yeah, even though I murder the Queen's language. <laughs> yeah. And so it was tough for me to go to, to Taiwan, but I was invited by the English-speaking church in Taiwan, so I went. And I, I went there, I did a three-day conference. Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, and then there was a special meeting on Saturday. Everything was in English, and it was perfectly fine until Saturday evening at dinner time. I was invited for dinner, and the English church pastor finally told me that his church is part of the Chinese-speaking church. And so, uh, so I thought he was a senior pastor, only to discover he was the English-speaking pastor of this Chinese-speaking church. And so I met this, this, this great man of God who speaks only Mandarin. And me, I speak only English and Espanol, you know. So I was like, you know, we don't communicate. But you know what? God is in the making. God is in the making. God touched me in an instant. And you know what? I could understand what he was saying. The following year, when I went back, I came back home and you can ask my wife, I was now singing Mandarin songs. Yeah. Just like my Spanish. I, can, I, I may not habla espanol so well right now, but when I get to Latin America, it kicks in. It's, it's not because I've learned the language but it is the making of God. And if God can do it for me, God can do it for you. When my daughter was one year old, we had a birthday celebration. She's 31 years old today. So we're talking about 30, 31 years back. She was a year old and, my, and one of my pastors presented a keyboard with 66 keys. You know, and I looked at it and it's like, what do I do with this gizmo? And my wife knows I don't play. Neither do I. I mean, I know myself. I don't play. You know what we did? I prayed that night. I said, God, touch my fingers the next day so that I can play the keyboard. And you know what? The next day, I played the keyboard. If it can happen for me, it can happen for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because God is in the making. Come, get into a, in, get into a relationship with Him. Follow. Start identifying. Start imitating. Then it gives God the right to make you. If you don't come, if you don't follow, there is no reason for Him to make you. But when you do the first two, you give Him the permission to make you because the empowerment of the call is sealed in the making. And God wants to make you today to become His vessel for whatever you need so that those lives can be touched for His glory. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And let me close with this. It's 4.41 right now. I told Pastor Kurt I'll hand over at 4.40. Give me a couple more minutes, Pastor Kurt. The empowerment comes from a relationship. The empowerment of the call is released through identification, imitation, the empowerment of the call is sealed in the making. And finally, the empowerment of the call is received through a commission. It is received through a commission. And I will make you fishes of men. That is what it is all about. There is an apostolic commission of God for our lives so that you and I 
can be fishers of men. I think of the start of the ministry when the disciples could not catch anything and Jesus says, push out a little to the deep and they caught so much fish. There at the first start of ministry, Jesus told them, you will no longer catch fish, but you will become fishers of men. Do you remember? In this episode, this is again the starting point. But we come to John chapter 21. And John chapter 21 is a strange passage. Because John chapter 21 tells us, Peter said to the disciples, let's go fishing. Because John chapter 20 was the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And Jesus appeared to many people. But John chapter 21 was a rather strange one. Because Peter said to the folks, let's go fishing. And they went fishing. And that's something wrong with this whole picture. Because the church of Jesus Christ knows that He resurrects, right? But we don't behave as if He has resurrected because we go back fishing instead of becoming fishers of men. And that's why Jesus had to ask Simon Peter, do you love me three times? Because Jesus was bringing him back to the call. You see, ultimately, the empowerment of the call is received by an apostolic commission. And you and I today need to reach out to receive. You see, receiving a commission is not just God speaking a commission over you. It's about this Greek word called lambado. And lambado means you have to reach out to take the call. Do you understand? God says this is the call. But the commission process is completed when humanity reach out and, and hold on to that commission and says, I receive the call. Oh, 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 oh,